Hello and welcome to C Sharp Logical Puzzles, Games and Algorithms. We are going to have some fun with this one. Ever wondered how the famous turtles vs hare race would go if simulated on the computer? Well, you're about to find out. But first, let's see what we will be creating. So there are several things that we need to put together. The race is quite simple. We have runners and move them on the racetrack based on the randomly generated number there will be the number of spaces to move and whether the runner moves forward or backward on the racetrack. So first we will have a racetrack. The length of the track is flexible and so is the number of runners. Now yes, the race is about turtles running against a hare, but we'll take it uh, one step further and allow for any number of runners. So I am sure you can already see that we will be using a two-dimensional array where each row represents portion of the length of the track and each column is a track for one individual runner. So if there are two runners, we'll have two columns. Three runners will have three columns, etc. Now you can see that there will be a symbol representing a runner displayed on the track. So T for turtle and H for hare. All runners start at the top and we will move the symbol for each runner as they move through the track. Now in order to simulate the race we need some rules that will manage the movement for each runner. And the rules are as follows. So as you can see the turtles will have three moves. Fast plot, slip and slow plot. And when fast plot happens we will move the turtle three squares to the right. Basically mean moving it forward. If a slip happens, that will move six squares backwards. And if slope plot, then one square to the right. And here has slip, big hop, big slip, small hop and small slip. And the equivalent of the move is for slip is no move at all. And big hop is nine spaces. And for example, small slip is two squares to the left, meaning we're moving uh, backwards. Now the interesting part is the percentage of time these moves should happen. So for example fast plot should happen 50% of the time for the turtles. Slip is only 20 and slow plot is 30% of the time for the total of 100% of the time. So how are we going to calculate the percentages? Well let's take the turtles again. So we will simply generate a random number between 1 and 100 and we will check if the number is between 1 and 50 because statistically numbers between 1 and 50 will be generated 50% of the time. If you think about it, any number between 1 and 100 has a 1% chance that it will be generated. So a range of numbers will have the equal percentage of chance as the range is. So between 1 and 50 it's 50%, between 1 and 60 it would be 60% and so forth. So if a number between 1 and 50 is generated, then that represents one of the moves. And it represents the fast plot, because that should happen 50% of the time. So for slip, which happens 20% of the time, any number in a range 1 and 20 has a 20% chance, but any range between 1 and 20 has 20% chance. For example, 51 to 70. That's 20 range and that's 20% chance if you generate a num number between 1 and 100. And the same for 30% generation. We simply generate a number between 71 and 100 which is 30 range and that will give us 30% chance. And if that happens we will perform the slow plot. And of course we will do the same for the hair. Now of course we can make our own rules. But for this exercise there are the rules that we will follow. We will also want to display each move for each player. This is not necessary, we could simply just watch the race by watching the players move along the track. However, displaying the moves will allow us to verify that our logic for the runner movements works correctly. And of course we need rules that will finish the race and declare the winner. This one is simple, the runner that reaches the finish line first is the winner. But if multiple runners finish at the same time, then all these runners will be declared winners. And one more thing, we will process the race as a series of rounds and in each round all runners will perform a move. 
We could just let the program run on its own by simply looping until the race finishes, but to have a better control and also to actually see what is happening and how our runners are performing, we will start each round with a simply pressing a key on our keyboard. Once the key is pressed, all runners perform a move and the program will wait for us to press a key to advance to the next round of race. Alright, are you ready to code? Let's do it! But before we hop to our Visual Studio, let me just say a few words about the approach I chose for this project. The logic for this project is not earth shattering, in fact it is fairly simple. However, I am going to use a complete object oriented approach. And the reason is that I want to make the program as extensible as possible. So when we decide to add another runner, we will be able to do so simply by creating the class for the runner, while all the logic and other classes remain the same. Using this approach, you will be able to not only practice the logical aspect of the exercise, but also to practice your object-oriented programming skills. Ok, the first class we can create is one that will be our track. As mentioned, we will make the track size flexible, but ultimately it will be just a simple two-dimensional array that will be updated after each round. So here is my class, I'll make it public. And our track will consist of cells, basically one line will represent one row. And the number of columns will depend on the number of runners. So we can declare a constant that will hold the length of the track and a second constant that will hold the number of runners. Since one runner equals one track, which in turn equals one column, then the number of runners will represent the number of columns while the track length will represent the number of rows. So for starters, we can set the length to just 10 and the number of runners to 2, which would be the turtle and the hare. Now we can declare our two-dimensional array and we can make it simple auto property. And let's make it a string because we will hold the string, which would be the name of the runner or a character for it at least. So here's my property that will get and set the two-dimensional array. And of course we need to initialize the array and we can do that in the constructor of the class. Now the first dimension represents the rows, which is the track length, and the second dimension is the number of columns, which is the number of runners. So we can simply use our track length as the first dimension and the number of runners as the second, which is the columns. However, since the indexes start from zero, we want to actually use one more index to the track length. So we will use plus one, and this way the indexes will go from 0 to 10 for the total of 11 indexes and the way we'll use it is that the index 0 will be our starting line and we'll have 10 rows of the track length with the 10th row being the finish line. Alright, moving on to displaying the racetrack. So let's create a method for that. And this is fairly straightforward. We'll simply loop through the complete array, meaning we need to use a nested loop because we are looping through two-dimensional array so one loop loops through the rows and the other loop, the inner loop, loops through the columns. And I'll move everything one line down from the top just so we don't start right at the top of the screen. So I'll use the console.write line first and then we can start the loop. So again we are looping through rows and through all the columns. And as you can see I'm starting from indexes 0 but the track length I'm less than equal to track length, I'm using this so I actually go all the way to the last index which is the index 10 which is our finish line. For the number of runners we'll start from the column 0 and column 1 so column 0 would be turtle and column 1 would be hare so we don't have any extra indexes we need. So now we could just display the cell of each index. So we want to separate each cell by a border but here's the trick. The cells are empty, or in other words, they are null. They do not have any value, not even an empty space. So if the cell is null, we want to display an empty cell with a border around it. But if the cell contains the runner, which is the T or H letters, then we want to display the border around that cells too, but we want to also display the actual character. So we check if the cell is null, and if it is, we'll just display an empty space and the borders. 
and if the cell is not null, that means it contains the runner's character, we will display the character with a border around it. So we'll simply use an if statement. So if the cell we are currently looping through is null, we'll simply display the border itself. Otherwise, meaning there's a runner in it, we'll display the runner. So we'll display the cell from the trucks, again indexes of i and c, and we'll add the border. So the way this is done is, uh, since we are displaying everything in one row, we are using console.write instead of console.write line. And of course, notice the spacing. The empty cell contains two spaces, then the border, and then one extra space. However, the cell with the runner in it contains the runner symbol, which is the tracks i and c with the indexes, and then an extra space, border, and another extra space. And this is done to make sure that the cells line up properly because the width of the cells needs to be the same. So whether the cell is empty or not, it is four spaces wide. Now, after we finish each row, we want to move to the next line so we can display another row. So after the inner loop, we'll use the console.write line to move to the next line. Now, there's one more thing. Actually, you know, let me just show you how this displays so far. So to run it, we'll simply create an object of a track class in our program and now we'll simply call the display truck method. So let's run it. So as you can see there is no border on the left. It looks like we only have one track and we can add that very easily though. So before we start writing each row we can simply write the border before we start drawing everything in the inner loop. And to make it even more interesting we can also display the number of each row. This is not necessary but it will be a good visual aid for us later when we verify that our runners move across the truck as expected. So here after I start every outer loop I will simply display the left border and the number of the line and then in the inner loop we will display the cells depending on whether they're null we'll display just the empty cell with the border or we'll display the runner's character and the border around it. All right, so let's give it another try. And you can see that now we have two racetracks, one that will be for the turtle and one that will be for the hare. And we have each of the cells numbered or each line from zero, which is the starting position, to 10, which is going to be the finish line. So now our racetrack is displaying as we intended. All right, so far so good. There's one more thing we want to do in this class and that is to display the runner's position on the truck. So I created a method for that, but currently we do not have any runner classes ready, so I am going to leave this method empty for now, and we will revisit it once we create our runner classes. So for now, this is our track class, and now we are ready to start creating classes for the runners. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.